so we, we saw the scope, and we can keep doing this, right? I can, you know, R Y equal 10, and so on. You can nest these as deep as you want, okay? Uh, we will see, wait, this is silly. You wouldn't do this in real code. Uh, what you would do is you would use statements like if and stuff, and then it would make sense to have this. I'm just saying the rules are based on the curly braces. Don't think of them in terms of if or for, all that stuff, okay? Uh, it just makes it easier to understand. Okay, there is another type of variable uh, that we can use. It's not really a variable, it's a constant. Uh, and so instead of var, you can use the keyword constant. Okay? Anybody guess what this is? Why I would want to do this? So the weaves can't go back in and change the value of pi and now your whole physics engine is messed up. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it won't let you do that, okay? Because you can't change the value. Um, cannot assign to x because x is a constant. You can't change it, okay? But otherwise, exactly the same as a variable. You, you know, it looks very much the same. You do like that, and everybody following? You just can't change it afterwards. So constants are actually super useful. So I'll show you a slightly different form. You almost never put a constant inside of a function. That's kind of unusual. You usually put them at the top level. Um, and so, you know, you can have like this, right? But you can also put parentheses like this. Okay? And then I don't have to have the const keyword repeated. I only have to use it once, and then everything inside the parentheses as if I put const x equal 5, const y equal 10, and so on. Okay? So it's just a nice short form. Uh, you get the idea. And that is just really clean to do it that way. It turns out you can do that for most of the keywords, right? So I can do it with imports. Um, I can do it that way, right? That's the same as if I did import quotes, import OS. I just put it in parentheses and now just list. And so that sort of pattern is used again and again. It's pretty handy for certain. No need for commas. No need for commas, exactly. Uh, can you declare like five? Uh, no. <laughs> that would be cool, but unfortunately, no. I tried, I was like, oh, can I go to functions? It's no. Um, I, I, it's probably because the grammar would be confused by that. Um, okay. Constant versus an int, I guess? It's just. A constant versus a variable. Versus a variable. Right. So, oh, good, good. Uh, these are all like this. These are all ints. So, ints is constant. so x is a constant of type int that has the value 5. For oh. yeah. So it can just never change. Yeah. Exactly. Through the lifetime of the program, you can't change. You had a question? Uh, what was OS? Just another package. I was just showing how you can include multiple packages with that parentheses. Um, though, this is another thing about Go. This is actually invalid. Uh, and the reason it's invalid is because I never use those packages. Mm -hmm. And Go forces you to use them. If you don't use them, it's an error in compilation. So actually when I say this, it gets rid of them. Uh, because it automatically does that. But if I use them, it wouldn't do that. So if I... Uh, why do you need constant again? To, to, to just uh, define uh, multiple variables? Or? Uh, the const is just so they don't change. Uh, and that's useful for a certain kind of values, like pi. Like, why would you ever change the value of pi, right? And so right. it's good to use a constant in that case, because it, it makes it a little safer, it makes your program a little less likely to have bugs uh, by having a constant instead of a variable. But otherwise, it works exactly the same way as a variable. That's, that's all I was trying to say. It doesn't have the short form. You can't say x colon equal and make it constant. You just have to use the long form. Uh, okay. Um, and that's pretty much variables. Any questions about variables? They're, they're pretty straightforward, especially if you programmed before. They're it's pretty much the same as in other languages. I just wanted to get the subtleties involved. Um, so now I'll talk about blank. Uh, so occasionally in Go code, so we saw this problem where this, this is going to get rid of my imports because I'm not using them. Um, it turns out you can use an underscore. Uh, and this underscore is like the blank identifier. 
it has sort of a special meaning to go when you use the blank identifier. It's like, just ignore this. And so in certain places you'll see where you have to use it as like a, I need, I'm trying to think of an example that's not going to be like secret. if you want the key value pair, but you only want the value and ignore the key. Exactly. So uh, sometimes you might, um, so in Go, functions can return multiple values. So I might have, uh, right, I might have some function that's defined somewhere and I return multiple values, but if I only wanted x and not y, I can use the blank identifier and it just throws away that value, okay? Uh, so you will occasionally see that blank identifier and that's what that is doing. It's just like don't assign this variable. Uh, but it would give a value to x, okay? Everybody following that? No. <laughs> okay. It, it's a... Uh, yeah, I think we'll see more examples later and then it'll start to make a little more sense. But I just want you to, when you see that underscore, think of it as the blank identifier. The, uh, it's like throwing away the value. And so in this case, I'm importing OS, but I'm not using it, so I import it to the blank identifier. Um, I guess I should say that when you do import FMP like this, it's, it's kind of like doing this. And this is the name it is inside of your code. And that's the package where it's from. And so we normally just remove that and just say import function, that's the default name. But we could change it, right? I can, I can do this. And that's, that's valid, okay. Um, everybody following what I'm doing here? Is default name is gonna be whatever is in the quotes? Exactly. Okay. Well, uh, yes, but uh, most, uh, some packages have slashes in them. Um, like IO, the name here, uh, if I get rid of this, would be IO util, okay. It's the last name in the path. So, I forget what's an IO retail, maybe this thing will tell me. It's not gonna tell me. But anyway, I would use it like this, like, right, okay. So it's the last bit. And, and just the import is as if it were doing this, okay. And I'm just saying that if you change this to underscore, it just still imports it, but it just ignores the. So then you would do underscore dot sub function, or no? No, you can't use it. The underscore is like get rid of it. So it's not underscore dot, this, you can't do that. Uh, it's just gone, okay. That's what the blank identifier is doing. Uh, one of the important things is that like uh, what he said about variables, if you create a variable and you don't use it, that's an error. And so sometimes you'll be doing something where you need to access something and a variable comes out of that, or maybe two variables come out of it, but you don't need one of the variables. So your choices would be to use it in some perfunctory way just so you could avoid the error, which is bad coding, or you could just put this underscore that says, I know that this variable is supposed to be used, but I'm not going to use it. So you're just, it's like a way to be uh, explicit with the computer compiler to tell it, look, I understand that there's a variable here and uh, I'm not using it. Here it goes, okay, you know what's going on. I'm not going to throw the error. So just, it'll make more sense as, as you see some of those examples where this is returning a couple of variables and we don't need this one, so we're gonna just put an underscore here. Yeah. Can you just quickly uh, re rehash again, rehash again what uh, the formatting that you can't do is? Um, you said that like there's only a single way of uh, formatting. That was just, you can't put the brackets on the next line uh, or something? I'll, I'll show you by, by uh, disabling that feature. Um, it, if you, uh, let's see. So in here you can disable the run format tool on save, and then it will let me write my code however I want. That's valid go code, that's what I'm saying. It's all one line, I put a semicolon between them, that's valid, okay? What I'm saying is the white space doesn't actually matter, Go doesn't care. Um, okay, it all works, the language is, it, it, 
these conventions are not uh, enforced. They're just conventions, and yeah. so you can do it however you like. I'm just saying that uh, most Go programmers, what they do is they run that Go format tool on their source code when they save it. That way it's always in the right uh, format for other people. Uh, but the compiler doesn't actually care, okay? Uh, this is perfectly valid Go code. It's not pretty, it's not what you would write, but it does work, okay? Um, everybody following that? Uh, okay. So those are basically variables. Um, so I think it would be helpful if we take our program that we wrote last time and we use a variable, right? So when we had our, I don't know if that's all still there in that scratch. It is, look at that. Uh, oh, well somebody already did it. <laughs> okay, you should take this, uh, this main and use a variable instead of having it hard coded inside of the, you know what I'm saying? Like in other words, make that hello my name is program, except use a variable instead of putting it directly in the string, okay? So, everybody want to try to do that? 